many people in this room will know that Westport Tourism and Westport Tidy Towns and Destination Westport and all these organizations, including the Chamber of Commerce, work in close harmony with the Town Council. And I think that's one of Westport's great strengths, that so many people in the voluntary sector and the statutory end of things are working together. And, and, and uh, it's one of Westport's great strengths because people are all pushing the boat out in the same direction. And in that context, I would like to welcome the Director of Services from Westport Town Council here this evening, Martin Keating, and the Town Clerk, and more. And also to welcome an appointment that was made by the Council some several months ago, and I think it's one that recognises the importance of tourism to the economy of Westport. And that is the post of Tourism and Enterprise Officer. And it's in the very safe hands of Mr. Dermot Langan. And Dermot will now give us a brief overview of what his work entails. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dermot Langan. Thank you, Sean. Good evening. Uh, I welcome the opportunity to outline, I suppose, what I do in the council because a lot of people say, God, you got a grand soft job up there, you know. But uh, it's a hard job and it's a job that uh, Westport Town Council, I suppose, uh, recognised because uh, the economic benefits of tourism to Westport uh, is enormous and uh, Westport Town Council has a, has a role to play in that. I was appointed uh, in January 2012 and uh, I suppose the aims really, from my point of view and from the point of view of the Town Council, was to establish possible liaison between the Town Council and the tourism interests locally and make the search for information uh, about uh, events and uh, hospitality more readily available, the promotion of Westport as a place uh, for greater visitor experience. Uh, also one of the aims was to coordinate all the events under one banner, and lots of people are doing lots of things in, in, in different ways and uh, bringing them all under one banner and to have a permanent point of contact uh, for event information. Then also to encourage the development of a program of events that will be vibrant, innovative and welcoming and exploit the goal of uh, establishing Westport as the activity capital of Westport, or of, sorry, of Ireland, which is very important because uh, with so much uh, great outdoors, it's important uh, to exploit that and establish ourselves as the activity capital of Ireland. And then the other aim, of course, was to help with the extension of the tourist season, rather than just have a June, July, August spread it out uh, to the, the other months of the year. So my first task then uh, within the council was to review all the existing information that was available. We advertised for information and lists about festivals and events. We used historical lists and local knowledge. Contacted all festival and event organisers and offered to meet and discuss their plans with them and compile listings which uh, we circulated last year online and also in hard copies. We met with all these organisations, we offered them encouragement and asked the organisers to be creative, uh, keep their information relevant and updated and of course more importantly to share their information and create links with others, uh, sharing links between the various uh, festivals, Destination Westport and Westport Tourism and all these other organisations working uh, to promote Westport. Also encourage them to use the internet and social media things like mayo.ie, westport.ie, Westport Tourism, website, Destination Westport, website, all of these things. So the Town Council's role then was really as well to provide practical assistance, support and advice and uh, we worked very closely with all the agencies, people like Garley, the HSC, the fire services, on public safety, traffic management, things like road closures, um, advertising road closures, the provision of signage for diversions, all that kind of thing. Um, very practical things like crowd control bar barriers, port loos bins, all of those kind of things. We also provided some free training. We invited uh, people to participate in free training for event organisers. Uh, we covered topics like event planning, funding, sponsorship, social media, the green of festivals, which is very important, and also volunteers and volunteering and how people could locate volunteers. Um, another project we engaged in was uh, new street information and location maps and they have been put around town in various locations. Again, they're kind of a 3D map uh, which uh, is very well received and you see lots of people referring to them every day of the week. Um, with the Green Inner Festivals, uh, we've just uh, bought a series of, of bins for all these events and festivals and these are segregated waste where uh, you have recyclables, uh, you've waste and you've got food waste as well. And, uh, they will be rolled out for, for all the events and festivals uh, and the council have, have provided those. Festival lists, uh, we are constantly updating that and I've left some at the, the very bottom of the room there 
and uh, to date, on this particular list for this year, we have 89 events. Now, some of them are just one-day events, maybe a 5K or, or some charity event, but some of them are pretty comprehensive events as well. So there's something happening every weekend in Westport, and they're all listed. These are available online as well, and they're shared with all our, our, our partners, whether it's Destination Westport or Westport Tourism or the hotel sector or the accommodation providers. And many of them are activity-based. There's things like Gale Force, Sea to Summit, Duathlons, Triathlons, Westport Teeth, Greenway 10K, other similar events. Get Out There Activity Festival, which uh, has a brochure and program on your, on your seat, and numerous Sea Angling events. Uh, then, of course, we have the, the other events like the Food Festival, Arts Festival, Rolling Sun Book Festival, which was established a couple of years ago. Again, very much a niche market, but, but establishing uh, Westport uh, worldwide. The annual Kirkpatrick uh, Pilgrimage, very important to us as well, Fulton Bluegrass Music Festival, the Westport House Festival of Music and Food. All these listed here, things like the Kirkpatrick uh, Heritage, the Horse Show, Horse Fair, all these very important events for Westport. And then there's a series of outdoor theatre events which have happened at Westport House in the last year. Halloween festivals, um, Went to Wonderlands, and um, Spring and Nullug. All of those, very, very important. As well as that, there are things like ongoing events, like cultural and music <coughs> events that are here in town. Um, Clue Bay Garden Trail, another great initiative where uh, 10 or 12 gardens locally open their gardens uh, to visitors and, and tourists. Very important element as well. The story of Grony Rail is told uh, every week at Hotel Westport. They've got Magic Lounge, uh, children's activity camps as well, also very important. And not forgetting the likes of Brona, who does all her um, wonderful tours of the town. All very important uh, for the tourists, and it's very important to get all that information out there. This year, of course, the year of the gathering, very important for us as well. Um, new festivals, things like the gathering for St. Patrick over St. Patrick's weekend, just extending the St. Patrick's Day celebrations, providing some free music on the streets with pipers and uh, very well received and uh, putting it into places like uh, coffee shops and I know Richard White is here and Richard participated in that as well and relayed stories and told poetry in Curry's Cottage which is very simple but uh, you know again very important to the tourist. Another new event that's starting uh, in September is uh, the Chamber Music Festival. Again, another niche market, it will be the same weekend as the food festival and we'll, one will complement the other and uh, some of the, the best classical musicians and chamber musicians in the country will be performing in town. Gathering for Faith, uh, as we mentioned, Crow Patrick Pilgrimage uh, Week Sunday is very, very important, but this year working with uh, the church, uh, with Father Charlie and uh, the team there, also the team in Morrisk and Harry Hughes, um, and targeting uh, diocese overseas. We're extending the pilgrimage uh, from the Monday before Reek Sunday right up to Reek Sunday and encouraging people to climb the Reek and there'll be daily mass on the Reek um, at 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock each day and encouraging people to come and you know extend that week as well as that there'll be some uh, historical talks and some music to, to complement that festival. As part of the gathering uh, we received some funding uh, from IPB um, for um, flagship events in, in Mayo, and three of them were, were granted, one in Ballina, one in Castlebar and Westward. And uh, we decided to go with uh, the Festival of the Pirate Queen, and uh, we've got a committee working on it at the moment. Uh, it's a celebration of Grace O'Malley, and we've got events right across, uh, not alone in Westport, but it takes you right across Clue Bay from Clare Island. We've got a warrior adventure race on Clare Island, we've got historical walks on Clare Island and talks as well. Right through to Lewisburg, where they're putting on a medieval uh, banquet, into Westport where we'll be doing lots of stuff uh, at Westport House uh, telling the story of Grony Whale and bringing us right on to Ackill and Ackill are, are doing yawl racing for, for two days and as well as that they're putting on a whole lot of food and music and uh, again a big celebration of Grony Whale uh, because uh, Grony Whale of course uh, very famous locally and uh, with her O'Malley connections and things like that we are hoping to uh, bring people from overseas to it. Another element of that we have of course Anne Chambers who's a uh, renowned um, for her work on, on Grony Whale. She will be giving some uh, talks on it. We're also hoping to have Sean Davey, who wrote the Grony Whale Suite, perform here in town. Aside to that, we've recently discovered that there are three microbreweries here in Westport. And uh, some bright spark came up with the idea of, why not a Grony Ale Festival? <laughs> so we have uh, worked on that. And um, thanks to Biddy Hughes from Westport House and uh, her team, uh, we, are, we are moving that forward. Uh, we've also discovered that there are some other microbreweries in County Mayo. We're working as well with some in Galway and uh, we're hoping to attract some from, from overseas as well. And uh, again, kind of uh, two days of, of that Grony Whale event 
with, with some, something novel and something new, and again, promoting, uh, I suppose, local industry. Telling the story of Westport is very important as well, and as part of the Heritage Towns Initiative, uh, some funding has been made available by Falch Ireland, and uh, the Town Council are coming on board as well with some funding. And we're going to tell the story of, of Westport, all the, the great things of Westport, whether it's Major John McBride or St. Patrick or Ronnie Whale, and we will have three actors who will perform outdoors three times a week for July and August. At the moment the script has been written by Porrick Brannock, you may know from, from uh, Mockness and uh, Druid and also from Killen Scully, he's the big guy in the bar, and uh, he's scripting at the moment, he's got quite a bit of experience of scripting those kind of things, and uh, he's working on that at the moment, and we would hope to have that in place for July and August of this year. Again, um, you know, with costumes and props, and uh, again for telling the real story of Westport, and, I think bringing another dimension to, to tourists and, and their experience here in Westport. And then bringing us on to uh, something that's going to be launched uh, in, the, uh, in the next week or thereabouts. Uh, in recent weeks we have advertised on Jobbridge for activity ambassadors. And this is an initiative, an initiative by the Town Council where they're going to fund the training of six to eight people who will act as tour guides, will uh, promote active participation in events and activities in the town. Um, the interviews have been held, um, people are now, in the next day or 24 hours possibly, will hear from John Bridge whether they have been approved or not. Um, they will embark on a five week training course at the Leisure Park um, starting next weekend. Um, they will learn all about um, how to guide cyclists, how to guide walks, um, cultural events, uh, maybe it's, it's handball or maybe it's uh, road bowling and maybe be able to teach a few Irish dancing steps to, to some visitors and uh, to be able to interact with, with visitors and guide them to the very best places. They'll also be in, in charged with uh, compiling programs each week of activities and encouraging active participation by the visitor. They will be made available to all the accommodation providers in town so if you're here in the, the Knockranny House Hotel and you've got one or two people or a group of people who want to do something, whether it's horse riding or recycle the greenway, these people will be available. They, it's just a call to the leisure park, and these people will be available to bring them and to help them and to interact with them. And I think it's, a, it's going to be a very important initiative. At this stage, I'd like to say a big thank you to Catherine for, the, for her work on this project, because Catherine has worked tirelessly on this project, because this is a partnership between Westport Town Council, Westport Tourism Organization, and the Mayo Sports Partnership, because when it's not too busy, let's say in October, these people will try to get active participation of the locals in sports because we've got lots of uh, great facilities here in town and um, Westport being such an active town, we're going to try and get more participation from the locals so they will be charged with increasing the amount of participation locally and that kind of thing as well. Um, two other things before I finish. Uh, we're at the moment uh, working on a very comprehensive town guide to activities and all the facilities and uh, we're also at the very early stages of the development of a smartphone app. Uh, tender documents have been drawn up at the moment and smartphones, as everybody knows, are, are the future and uh, an app for Westport is going to be very important. Just a review of the outcome of my position and what the town council have been doing. We've had very positive reaction from event organisers and tourism groups. Relationships have been firmly established with all the event organisers and the various agencies. A single point of contact um, has been welcomed by many. We've received substantial positive media coverage for Westport, um, radio, TV and print. And it's further established the Westport brand as a quality visitor destination, offering something special for all the family. And uh, I think it provides a platform for future planning and success. As I said, there is some lists of the uh, festivals and events available, um, also available online. And just as a little side, for part of the gathering for St. Patrick, we ask people to uh, write a poem uh, using three words, Patrick, Westport and the gathering. We had uh, close to 300 entries and we published a booklet and launched it just after St. Patrick's Day of uh, local people who uh, wrote lovely poetry about Westport. And I know that Sharky Hill, the playgroup association in town, or playgroup, community playgroup, are selling these at the moment. They're only five euros each, or you can get three for a tenner, and they're available in Shane's Stuffies and all other good bookshops. Thank you very much.